What's going on guys, it is Murdering here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends, and today we have a really important video for you. I figured something out while I was on stream, while I was going over something, a piece of information that I've actually never given out before, that's a rather crucial piece of information, and it kind of blew my mind that I never made a video on this before, and there was nothing out there on this already. We're going to talk about that today, it's going to be extremely important, it doesn't matter if you are early game, mid game, end game, free to play, or whale. I guarantee you, you're going to have a lot to take out from this. The specific act I was doing was I was rolling gear with this new system and the new forge, which is extremely RNG. And I was putting charms and picking out pieces of gear. And people were really curious as to why I had picked certain items and certain substats. And I realized that, as I've said before, there's no skill involved in this game. It's all knowledge based and I don't even know the most about this game. I've been playing for a very long time so I definitely have a good grasp on how it works. However, that just gets to the point where the more you know, the better you're going to do. So what I realized I've never told people is pretty much how an account takeover works. How can somebody give me an account? I can make it that much better with what they already had on the account. What were they missing? What did I have that they didn't have? And a lot of this comes down to one thing, how I actually gear my champion. And like I said before, I've shown you the gear, I've shown you the stats, I've said aim for these stats and aim for these thresholds, but I've never actually shown you the procedure on how to gear a champion. Now, a lot of people may assume they already know how to gear a champion, but there's actually a really efficient way to do it based on which pieces you pick first on top of how you choose your mastery. So this is actually going to save you lots of silver and it's going to guarantee you have the best build for your champion based on the gear you currently have available. So you're really maximizing the potential of your account, which is why I said this will help free to play all the way to endgame whales because i even have a surprising amount of takeovers from people who are already in top 50 in platinum just to see what i can do with their account and watch how they get much better at the game just for me having a consultation with them over discord kind of breaking down how i do things and what i do and that definitely goes a long way so i want to make a video about that right now and pretty much show you guys the entire process and how i break everything down we're going to start off by gearing a rare champion then i'm going to gear a really fun champion at the end we're going to do a dragon run and we're going to see how much damage that fun champion can actually do to that wave then finally to conclude the video i'm actually going to come back here and open up 28 pieces of this new gear set that gives speed and accuracy and see if we can pull anything good based on the knowledge we just talked about aiming for those certain things even though like i said earlier there's a ton of rng involved with this system already and it's really not good to get your hopes up too high. So let's start off with gearing the champions and see what kind of information you guys can pick up from what I'm about to show you. So the champion we're going to start with today is actually a War Maiden. Now I'm going to show you the process from literally start to finish as if I just six start, I just ascended, and I fully booked her on what I would do next. So all of this is going to assume that you actually know how her kit works and where you as the player are going to put the champion we're talking about into the game as far as progression goes, speed farming, so on and so forth. So for War Maiden, we're going to be strictly looking at dungeons here. So the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to start with your masteries before you put any single piece of gear on this champion. You're going to look at what her role is going to be, which is going to be a debuffer. We're not really too focused on damage here. And you're going to assess based on the type of damage she's going to need, which mastery tree is going to be the best for you. Now I'm not going to talk about mastery builds and all of that. I have a separate video for that. I'm just going to talk about key points on how to start off with your masteries. What's probably going to shock you is you're actually not going to fully mastery this champion. For her specifically, I'm going to be using the support tree as well as the offense tree. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to do one point in crit rate, one point in crit damage. I'm going to take accuracy all the way through to lore of steel. Then I'm going to stop. So what I just did here was I got rid of every single stat bonus I could possibly get from the masteries tree right off the bat. So while I'm gearing, I can see it instantly go into effect so I know what kind of thresholds I'm hitting. What this is going to do for you is it's going to make sure that you're not gearing your champion then having to go back saying, wow, I messed up my masteries. I didn't need lore of steel. I didn't need the accuracy or I didn't need the crit rate. I could have taken the flat attack, so on and so forth. So simply getting these six mastery points you see here out of the way, that's how I start every single time when I'm 
reworking a champion for someone or I'm building a new character. The next thing we're going to talk about is the gear. What is the first item I'm going to look at every single time to put on this champion? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go straight to the banner and say, is this champion going to use an accuracy banner? After you determine whether or not you're going to use accuracy, the only other thing that matters and the primary focus of your banner is getting as much speed onto the banner as possible to alleviate some pressure when putting on your other pieces of gear because the key takeaway for any champion that's going to be debuffing in a dungeon is that it always has to go before your damage dealing champions. So the higher speed you have, for this champion gives you much more wiggle room when you're actually building damage dealing champions making sure they're never going before your debuffer so you can maximize the potential there so with that being said i'm going to click accuracy go to speed on the substat we have this one here with 16 speed we're going to equip it now since we're here what we're going to do is we're going to go straight to the neck now the biggest takeaway for the neck piece always find accuracy or resistance that's all that matters you can determine whether you want HP, defense, or crit rate. Flat attack necks are rarely used unless you're using a bomber. And even then, when you're using a bomber, they're more than likely going to have 100% crit. And you're going to get more value out of the crit damage from the raw damage your champion's actually doing rather than that bomb damage addition. With that being said, accuracy is going to be the main focus here as opposed to resistance. So those are the only two stats that actually matter on your neck piece. And nothing else should matter to you. So since this champion's primary purpose is to debuff, and I know as well as you should know as the player what kind of comp she's going to be in, if she isn't going to be paired with a revive champion, you want defense and HP. If she is, it doesn't really matter what main stats are on this neck piece. So all we're looking for is accuracy. We have our neck piece here with 32 accuracy, so that's fine. As far as the ring goes, this goes to the same point with the neck. You can either go a main stat where your damage scales from, which would be attack for War Maiden, or you can go survivability and you're always going to use defense. I highly recommend not using HP. You can work with HP a lot in other pieces of your gear, and it's not something you should really focus on on a ring. So with the attack being in mind, we have our attack ring. We're going to equip that. Now we move on to the main pieces, and this is really important. Always start with your gloves. Just always start with your gloves. Whether you're doing defense gloves, crit rate, crit damage gloves, always start with the gloves and let that set the pace for every other piece of gear you're going to wear. Now, while this will apply to everyone, it's also rather important that you actually know what's on your account when doing this. Obviously, no one's expected to memorize every single piece of gear. However, if you have a triple roll or a quad roll and a very important stat, you want to know where that piece is at all times and if it's available, if you're going to use it, because that can definitely determine a lot of things going forward. What we're going to do with our War Maiden is we are going to use crit rate gloves on her for that additional damage now the hardest part's probably going to be how do i know which set to use if i use mismatching sets and that's where the second part comes in if you're building crit rate gloves and you're not going for survivability like i'm doing the secondary stat is always going to be crit damage no matter what on the glove piece the same goes for vice versa. If you're using a crit damage glove, you always want crit rate on there as well. So for this particular example, we're not going to care about set bonuses and all of that. We're literally just going to pick a piece here, crit rate, crit damage, and it has attack, which is her main stat. So this is going to be the piece we're going to use. From here, this sets the path for the rest of your pieces of gear. Now that we have crit rate on the main set of the gloves, if you want to be optimal with it, every single other piece is going to have crit damage to make sure you're getting the most value out of that glove piece. With that being said, since we're going for damage, you're always going to use a chest piece that has the flat stat that matches your damage multipliers. For the case of War Maiden, that is going to be attack. So we're going to be looking for the highest start attack but we're also going to be looking for crit damage. And now we add speed to the chest just to see if it's possible. And it looks like we do have an attack, crit damage, and speed. So we're good to use that piece. Now the next thing we're going to do since we've hit most of our main stats here, key takeaways going forward are going to be the following. When you have a shield, a shield's where you want to focus on any defensive stat as well as crit damage. Those are the two main takeaways. If you're using crit damage gloves, you're going to want to focus a shield with crit rate only. With that being said, we're going to swap our search here, look for any shield with speed and crit damage, and we have 
two double rolls here, so that's the perfect fit for this slot. If this was a defensive champion, if you really wanted to maximize your potential, this is where you're looking for that defense percent as that secondary focus on the shield. Moving on to the boots, once again, relating all the way back to the gloves, we're going to be looking for speed boots with crit damage in these substats here. So the first one we found here, we have speed and crit damage. Our accuracy is fine because we determined that all we would need is the mastery, our current great hall bonus, and this banner here. So now we can put those there. Now the helmet is always going to be the flex spot, so always build your helmet last. The helmet is the only static main stat piece that can have any substat in the game on it. What I mean by that is the main stat of the gloves chest and boots can all change however on the weapon you can never get defense percent on the weapon and for the shield you can never get attack percent on the shield that is not the case for a substat on the helmet which is why you're always going to leave it as that flex spot now what we're going to do here is once we get to the weapon which is always going to be the second to last thing you're going to build you're going to look at your crucial breakpoints on your champion. So the crucial breakpoint for my champion is going to be one, making sure it's at a decent speed so it's always debuffing first, and two, making sure I'm at that 100% crit threshold. So now that we know that, the only stats we really care about is crit rate and speed. Now if I happen to be at 100% crit rate already with these four pieces, this is where everything would drastically change. I could go into attack percent speed, I can go into crit damage and speed. Now that we have four pieces on this champion, two of them aren't matching, two of them are. Now I have the option to kind of search around a little bit through the inventory and really determine which set bonus I'm looking to get from this champion. I know accuracy is fine. So one thing I could do if I wanted to is I could definitely look for a offense set or a cruel set, unless I wanted to make sure the survivability is a little bit higher. And I could go for an immortal set and try to get HP as passively as possible without having to rely on it as a substat. So for this particular champion, I'm going to elect to use a cruel weapon, which has attack percent, speed, and crit rate, all three beneficial stats that this champion can use. And now we hit this flex spot here. This is where, by the time you hit this spot, you should be very close to every single threshold possible, and you should only be looking for buffer stats. What I mean by buffer stats are attack percent, HP percent, or defense percent, since you can definitely get the most value out of it for the helmet equipment piece. So the only thing we are missing here is crit rate, so we can deselect speed, Go ahead and hit attack percent and now we can find the best helmet that will fit what we're trying to do here so as we can see we're only nine crit rate short and what we have here is attack percent speed and crit rate so we ended up finding it and it happened to match with the cruel set so we can throw this bonus on and, and now we fully built a champion how i do it how i break everything down i guarantee you if you follow these steps you'll save tons of silver with swapping pieces out realizing you didn't need this much crit rate, you didn't need that much crit damage, or you built way too much accuracy. I can't tell you how many times I've seen accounts with 330 accuracy on their champions saying it's the best gear they could come up with, and it takes me literally two minutes to swap around gear, improving all of their other stats significantly and reducing their accuracy significantly. So if you can follow these steps, make sure everything's in order. Based on the order of operations that I pretty much just showed you there, the quality of not only your gameplay and progression, but you building champions, making sure they last throughout all of the stages of the game is going to increase more than you can imagine. So now taking a brief look at what this champion's final stats look like, I have three pieces that aren't fully maxed, but this is how the War Maiden turned out. 213 speed, 106 crit rate, 179 crit damage, 218 accuracy, 3700 attack, and 24,000 health. So all of this is wrapping up to be the perfect debuffer for dungeons assuming you have a revive champion like an arbiter the next step from here would obviously be to go to masteries finish out those masteries and this champion would be complete free to use from early game all the way to mid game based on how you built it the first time and you would never need to change it after that unless you got a better champion where you could literally take this gear and put all of this gear on that next champion keeping in mind what the new champion's base stats are so you have a pretty good idea on what those end stats are going to look like in case there's any drastic change in the base stats from champion to champion now what we're going to do is we are actually going to have some fun with this you're going to gear one of the i believe five ithos this account has let me just double check we have three there okay i missed 
misspoke, only four Ithos on this account. However, this is the one we're going to be gearing today. This is where we're going to go over thresholds as well as skill interaction. So Ithos is interesting because the main use of this champion is this A3. This attack is always critical. So this makes gearing in life a lot better. And this obviously isn't going to apply to a lot of other damage dealing wave clear champions. So keep that in mind so you don't take it too much for face value. We're kind of just going to have fun here trying to build as much damage as possible on this champion and then see what he can actually do in a Dragon 20 run. All right, so now let's get into the masteries and get this show on the road here for what we're going to do. Crit rate, crit damage. And as far as the support tree, don't need accuracy. Defense isn't going to do much for us. And I already know what set I'm going to use, and it's not going to benefit from Lore of Steel. So after these first two points in offense tree, we can just go ahead and start our gearing process here. Now obviously, banner, really easy. We're just going with straight attack. We're going to find as much as we possibly can here from this Royal Guard here. Now something really important to consider. I've mentioned this before. Some people might not have caught it. If you were going to build a wave clear in a dungeon, they don't need speed at all. Now, when I say they don't need speed, I'm literally talking about they don't need any speed. So if you don't know how the dungeon mobs work in all the dungeons, what you see on the screen here, no gear, base stats, the base speed in particular, this is the speed directly related to the champion you see that you're fighting in whatever dungeon it is. That is their base speed in all of the dungeons. I was curious about this, I asked Plarium. They did say the ascended speed for level 20 dungeons baseline is what the speed of all the champions are. So the fact that I am going to be running an Arbiter makes it so I literally have to build zero speed, full damage, and I will always go before the enemy team. There is that situation where they can have a fast champion with, let's say, 115 speed, but since we're getting that turn meter boost, there's no possible way I'll get cut in on. So now that we have the banner, let's go right ahead onto the neck piece. It's going to be crit damage. Don't need accuracy for this guy, so we're going to go flat attack as the secondary. Over 120 attack from a neck is absolutely gigantic. Now, finally, moving on to a ring. We want attack percent and attack. 18%, so 18% is going to be the best we have here. Now, I'm going to be using a specific set, being that Savage set. So the question is, what am I going to do next? Since I'm going to use a Savage set, this would normally be extremely difficult. However, the fact that Ithos doesn't need any crit rate at all for that A3, things are significantly easier. So what I would recommend, if you go into a champion knowing you're going to be using a four set piece, which makes things a lot more difficult when gearing, you still have to follow the same rules of picking the gloves first, to determine everything else. However, you have to pay more attention and have a better knowledge of what pieces you have for those four sets to make sure everything else is going to work out perfectly. So for me, I'm going to start with attack percent boots here. Since I already know the four pieces and where they're going to come from, let's head straight to Savage. We have it on one of the other Ithos. So that's 18% crit rate. Even though we don't need it, it's the best attack percent boots we'll find. Now, as far as gloves go, we're going to go crit damage and without crit rate the next best is attack percent gloves we're gonna go ahead and use these gloves here now it's time to find an attack percent chest piece and see what the best we can come up with is we want crit damage on the sub stat attack percent on the main stat crit damage set would be nice here although it's only a five star piece it looks like we're going to have to settle with for this this is one situation where i'm actually going to hold off and make sure my attack percent to crit damage ratio is good enough to use helm smasher before i commit to this possibly using a broken set instead with higher crit damage so we're gonna have to see how that weighs out so ideally the rule of thumb is if you're going to run 5,000 attack you want to aim for at least 260 percent crit damage before taking helm smasher there's definitely a specific chart that shows you the direct relationship between attack percent helm smasher and crit damage however helm smasher as we all know has a percentage chance to actually apply as opposed to flawless execution which is crit damage 100 percent of the time so regardless of which one's better you have to consider that one cannot proc at all 
lowering the value significantly compared to something that's much more consistent. So the balance has to be rather big to justify it. With that being said, let's head straight to the shield and we're looking for crit damage only on a savage shield, which is going to in fact be 20%. Moving on to the helmet and weapon, we're going to pretty much be looking for the same exact thing. Crit damage, also adding attack percent on top of things. So we're gonna use this weapon here. We have a ton of attack on it. We have a triple roll, so let's use this. As far as helmet goes, we don't have too many options here. So we're gonna look for our best attack and crit damage option, which is probably going to be our second one right here, just to make sure we're getting the most value out of it. Which brings us to the final question, going back to the crit damage chest. Is it going to be worth using a 50% attack percent chest over a six star one and not getting the crit damage bonus. Since we're at 4.6 thousand attack already, as this gear is, it is safe to say that we can in fact use that five star that was already on a cold heart, I believe, correct. And we're gonna jump up 800, which is perfect. Also, we're gonna jump up 30 crit damage total. So the final stats before I add any masteries are going to be 6.4, just under 6.5 thousand attack, 292% crit damage. So based on this, what we're going to do is this damage is going to be so high that it's very likely I'll one shot every single wave of any dungeon I put this guy in, regardless of Helm Smash or proccing or not. That's the good news and that's the perfect indicator for me to say I'm okay to go with Helm Smasher. Now what would I have done to take Flawless instead of Helm Smasher? If my crit damage was under 230%, I would definitely elect to go with that Flawless Execution to get the more consistent damage from crit damage, making sure I was always at a stable line of damage instead of sometimes killing things and sometimes not killing things. With that being said, I'm going to finish the masteries now. Then we are going to go and head to Dragon Stage 20 and see how much damage this Ithos can actually do. So now we're going to go start our run here and see just how hard this Ithos can actually hit. And if you look at the turn meters based on the speeds I mentioned before, with this turn meter boost, him being at such low speed, he's always going to go first because it's taking the base speed of these mobs here. We're going to burn an A1 here, increase that crit damage just a little bit because why not? And we do have defense down that isn't applied to one of the champions here. Let's see if his A3 can actually kill this champion without defense down and let's see where Helm Smasher procs and where it doesn't proc. Okay, so 252,000, and I believe it was 132,000. So it's hard to really know where it procced and where it didn't proc. So we're going to run it one more time just to see. All right, what we're going to do this time is take it in one time speed. We'll get that attack up. See if we can get lucky with that defense down on all champions this time. And it's still got resistance on one. Let's see if we can apply it with our Royal Guard. We did, so everything worked out great. Now let's use increased crit damage. And finally, let's boost one more time and use this A3 and see how much damage we can actually do with Ithos A3 ability. So 240, 250, and 218,000 with an Ithos and Savage gear. Really cool to see. And this guy's definitely an absolute monster, especially since this is strictly from his gear and the buffs and he has no extra multiplier in his kit as far as damage goes. But now that we had some fun with Ithos, the big takeaway from this is to... I clicked on that way too early by accident. Uh, five star, we'll keep it just in case. So the biggest takeaway here is, when you're in the forge, when you're looking for a piece of gear, keep all of this in mind. This will also help you when you're farming, knowing what gear to keep, what gear not to keep. After you build four or five champions with the strategy that I just told you, you will know exactly what stats you want on which sets and what pieces of gear, and this will help round out your account much better than before. Right now, we're going to burn these charms here, and our weapon, perfect example, what are we aiming for for a weapon? We know right off the bat, with a set like this, it's probably going to go on to some type of debuffing champion that wants to focus on speed. So based on the set, if I didn't have to pick speed, the other option that I would actually pick would be crit rate, since crit rate is something that's commonly used when using crit damage gloves. So let's roll this, and obviously RNG is going to play a huge part in this, and we can end up getting a flat stat legendary piece just like this. 
So for the rest of these, we're pretty much just going to roll the dice here and see if we can get anything good out of this. Crit damage HP, it is 6 stars, so I guess I can't complain too much. How long is it going to take to get a weapon? We did get a weapon, we got crit rate. It was 5 stars, so it's a little bit unfortunate. We're going to keep it because this set's probably going to be extremely strong in the Void Tower. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind when rolling here, it's much better to specifically aim for stats on a weapon, helmet, or shield since you're always going to get the flat stat main stat. If you want to roll something like a gauntlet, I would recommend not wasting any charms because you can get that sub stat you want, but it can be rolled on a flat stat piece of gear and that's not the most ideal way to actually use your charms. We're going to roll a few weapons, then we're going to roll some helmets and then finally some shields and see what we can actually pull out of this. So not a weapon yet, flat HP, this will sell for sure. Now let's get rid of weapon, move on to helmet, see if we can get better luck there since we're running out of the upgrade charms. We did get a helmet first try with speed on it, which is perfect. Now let's see what else we can get. That was also a legendary piece, so bonus points there. This does have accuracy, but two flat stats. This is going to be a waste of silver to even attempt. We're just going to go ahead and sell that. Now let's go ahead and roll another piece. You have to love the stability of the servers at the moment. And finally, the piece sold. Now it's going to get me a new piece. Let's see. Legendary 5-star weapon. Accuracy, no speed, HP percent. We'll keep it just in case. We have two more rolls, so let's move all the way down to a shield. And let's get risky with it and get crit damage on the shield. Let's see what we can pull off here. I guess we got a weapon with speed and accuracy. Not bad. It is five star. You hate to see it, but outside of that, all things considered. Okay, defense percent, accuracy, speed. This is a really strong piece. Once again, five star, so not the most optimal piece to get. Now that we don't have any additional chances, this is where I would actually go for something like boots and pretty much just spam our chances with boots, trying to get something like accuracy on the substat for three rolls just to maximize our chance of getting speed on the main stat. Defense, crit, accuracy, we'll keep it. Thankfully, we saved up for a while on this account. Five star gear, you never know when you're gonna use a set like this in the void tower, so we'll keep all of that. This is what I'm talking about, flat defense, six star, probably the best legendary piece, and it rolled a flat stat, which you hate to see. Let's roll again. We have defense percent gloves, five star piece. Really looking to hit that lottery winning pull and get speed boots here. HP percent gloves, five star once again. We have 10 more chances. Make the dream come true. Resistance chest piece, this could be good in a very specific scenario. Speed on the weapon. Seven more chances. Double HP. This I would never keep. It seems like even though we've been on boots, we've been getting other pieces, which is good and bad. It's good because it's widening the variety of pieces of gear we're actually getting. It's bad because we're using these charms that we... I'm not going to say spent money on and worked hard for, but... You would think the chances would be a little bit higher when looking for something like this. Crit damage is not terrible. It is five star, so... Definitely lowers the value a ton. Accuracy chest piece. This is good. Once again, five star. So can't really compare it to a six star piece of gear, especially with a new set like this. While the bonus is strong, it's not incredibly strong. It's pretty much just giving you that 5% speed that you wouldn't have had before if you were using just an accuracy set. While 5% may seem like a lot, it's really not a ton overall. It is going to add up to be... 15% overall if you can get six good pieces, but after what we just saw there with how many pieces we just rolled, consider getting six perfect stat pieces, have them roll the substats you want, all of them six star, weigh your odds there, not very high, so while this forge is a good system, there's a ton of RNG involved, although it does feel good to roll a piece and hopefully get something good. Now that we did that, we might as well roll our swift parry set. We're not really looking for anything specific, so we'll just go with the gloves here. See if we can pull anything nice. 
Nothing too impressive there. Let's keep going, see if we can get lucky here. We got speed boots, they're five star attack percent resistance. Not the best, but really can't complain. HP percent boots, maybe for the void tower for some RNG in the harder stages. Flat HP gloves, we won't be keeping those. Although we did get gloves, so we got lucky there. Speed on the weapon, six star, we'll take it. And that ends our pulling, so that was a lot of fun at the end there. Most people aren't going to be able to save up that many and pull that much, unless you're really farming the end stage of the faction wars. I think it's a good system, but once again, I'm really not a big fan of RNG. But let me know what you guys think. What did you think of the gear breakdown and how I kind of showed you my process and how I do things. I think it's going to help a lot of people out, especially if you start doing this when gearing every single champion. It's going to lower the amount of times you spend on gems, refreshing your mastery. It's going to save you silver in the long run when either swapping gear from champion to champion or trying to additionally tune a champion in a dungeon to compensate for anyone else in that team so as always guys thanks a ton for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe turn on that notification bell and i will see you all in my next upload